What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. So we've just finished test three of the Lions South Africa Tour 2021 and this was a game I think we all wanted. This was going to be the big one. For anyone who's like a real big sort of rugby fan, you don't really want it to be a 3-0 win one way or another. You wanted it to come down to this very game, the one all, the decider, the big one. Everyone just throwing everything they had at it, big team changes, big calls, and this game has a lot to talk about in all honesty. There's a lot going through. We had a lot of new subscribers because of the last review video, so welcome to everyone who is new. For anyone who's new to this video specifically, uh, what we do in this video is we just sort of go through and we review the game, go through some game points and what the big uh, big moments were, and in all honesty, there is an awful lot to talk through. You'll probably know by now how long this video is and how much I'm going to talk about this. Uh, but what we do is we do for all of these, we will check the game events up here so that you guys can see all of the game events. And in all honesty, there's not a lot on this board considering what we've had in some of the other tests. But in terms of the actual things going on on the pitch, there is an awful lot to talk about. So let's get into it. So the game got kicked off. No real changes in teams and stuff before the game kicked off. We did do the preview video, of course, that we normally do, talking about actual team changes made, but no sort of early dropouts. Uh, South Africa started off with a really strong start, from my opinion. Um, the high ball was certainly going to be used again. We saw it a lot. And I think within, well, the first minute anyway, there was two from two wins in terms of aerial battles for South Africa that did leave me thinking, would the Lions be able to cope with this thing? And by the 10th minute, I counted on the field six aerial battles and all of them were won by South Africa. Um, it did begin to dither out towards the end of the game, actually. We didn't see quite as many sort of high balls from South Africa, but they were certainly struggling. Certain people like Liam Williams played a little bit better in the game, managing to deal with that compared with, like, Hogg last week. Uh, but South Africa certainly trying to utilise that. Um, there was a Lions penalty in the second minute, which had come in as South Africa being offside. And discipline certainly wasn't on uh, the best terms for either of the teams. Uh, there was a knock-on in the air and there was a play in front of the jumper. So this one not specifically an offside, more of an accidental offside. Um, but that's the way it goes. Dan Bigger did miss that penalty though. Um, so it remained nil-nil even though that could have been an early start, an early boost for the Lions. They didn't manage to get there. There was a comment made by Will Greenwood. I'm going to sidestep the review for a second. For anyone watching in the UK base, does anyone else get really annoyed by Will Greenwood's coverage of some of these games? The comment that he made for Dan Bigger missing that kick was... He's missed one kick in every test, but other than that, he's kicked 100%. What does that mean? That's not a statement. You guys might not see it down in South Africa, but he just constantly says things like that. I have no idea what they mean. Uh, back to the review. Uh, so the South Africa managed to get their own penalty not too late on. Uh, Bundyaki with a high tackle. There was big calls coming into this game where the Bundyaki's discipline was going to let him down. There were certainly a couple penalties in this game from Bundyaki, mainly in the start there. Um, a seatbelt tackle not too harsh on him. Um, but they uh, they chose to go for the lineup. They kicked the lineup. The lineup did fail, though. The false throw being done from uh, Mubonabi there. So again, early on, we're seeing those little mistakes kicking in. Teams trying to warm up. It's a real shame that South Africa have quite a, a few times now. They've had a bit of a cold start. Um, even though they win in the game last week, again going into this game, weird penalties like that. They know the line out is dominant. It's a really good area for them. Strange move to do the uh, the fake throw there. Um, but they did manage to get a turnover later on. South Africa managed to get a turnover in the eighth minute. Um, the South African defence in this game was brilliant. In terms of tight-knit play, forwards going against other forwards, the tackling was brilliant from South Africa. Um, they took on a bit of a Lions approach, the two-on-one tackles we saw a lot of in this game, but just the physicality that South Africa bring to this game was absolutely awesome. Um, basically, the defence coming up so quickly is just forcing the Lions to kick, and because the South Africans were so much better in the air than the Lions, uh, we really saw it being almost like an issue having for the Lions having to kick away. Anyway, um, do I'm Van der Merp being one of the clear people in this, really struggling with um, some of the high balls going in. They really struggled to get under almost any of them. Um, South Africa did move up the field, and eventually in the 10th minute, we get the South Africa penalty. Um, the line's not rolling. It's something we saw a lot going on in this game. Um, Kobus Reinach was much, much quicker at getting the ball out than Fafta Cloak. We've seen in the last two games, the speed and energy and the tempo being increased by South Africa when they have the ball in hand is so nice to see. Um, the Lions obviously wanted to play this game at tempo. We saw it when it came to pretty much most of the set plays at scrums, at lineups. They wanted to get them to go quickly. They were trying to show the referee that South Africa were dawdling and taking their time. But as soon as South Africa had the ball, they upped their own tempo, which meant 
those sort of approaches don't really work if they're doing it with their own ball. It just becomes both teams are sort of going for big tempo when they have their own ball. Kobus Reinhardt being a very, very good uh, part in that cog, in that machine. Uh, Bundyaki was again penalised for this penalty, not rolling away. So again, the issue is being uh, a little bit worrying there for Bundyaki. Pollard did manage to get the kick, as you can see by the, uh, the board there. But one of the bigger impacts on this game was at the same time during that phase of play, Dan Bigger picked up an injury to his knee and that left us to see Finn Russell coming on very early in this game I expected him to come on late into that game to see if he could win the game for them late on but coming on in the 11th minute big ask of him hasn't played rugby in five weeks he's been out with injury uh, hasn't got to play any of these main tests and there was a lot of pressure on him to show up for this nice to have the halfback partnership with him and Ali Price they were going to work well together hopefully um, but I think for, for the most part you would say Finn Russell had a really good game I think even the South African contingency would say that Finn Russell had a a really good game and to be honest I don't really feel we missed Dan Bigger too much in there um, Finn Russell really bringing a very different element of just sheer attack the offloading the passing game that we get to see him doing that Scotland team um, bringing it into this Lions team and in all honesty uh, they seem to step up a little bit as soon as uh, Finn Russell came on in the 13th minute Lions get their own penalty South Africa not releasing there was a couple of these that, uh, that happened in this game uh, Visa I believe is the pronunciation a couple of people were very helpful in the comments last week helped me pronounce who I think I called Vice I think I said last week but Visa the number eight um i thought it was a little harsh um liam williams did look like he had a little bit of a knock on when the ball went to ground and then visa was on the ground sort of on his knees he did sort of clamber back to his knees to get on the ball i do agree he was off his feet when it happened but i do think the knock on happened first so i think that probably could have been a scrum to south africa uh so lions getting away a little bit lucky with that one um the lions win the penalty um and they kicked it uh to the corner uh, the South Africans gave away a free kick. Now, this was a free kick we saw a lot in this game. Closing the gap of the line out. Both teams penalised for it. Um, there was nice sort of consistency from the referees in giving this. We've seen it through the past two tests and no one really calling it out. No one in world rugby really calls it out. It happens in a lot of games. Uh, but it was nice to see them being consistent with this one. Um, they did then get the uh, the scrum and the Lions managed to win another penalty there from the scrum. Tyke Furlon having a really good scrummaging there and uh, Finn Russell managing to get his penalty. This obviously brought a real big boost to the Lions. The next five minutes was pretty much all Lions. They went on a huge attack. Finn Russell, the injection of Finn Russell along with Ali Price and speed of the breakdown, speed to the receiver speed further outwards uh, was such a big impact we got to see it the speed of passing the offloads being used by the entire team there was obviously a plan a and a plan b set up in training for when Finn Russell came on they just had to switch to it earlier because all of the players even the forwards looking for offloads far more than looking for the driving tackles and stuff um, really really nice to see they were managing to find the gaps in the 18th minute they did uh, concede another penalty South Africa there with a high tackle uh, they kicked to the corner not the post big call we got to see it a lot from this Lions team definitely looking to try and turn over this game although when we get by the end of this game we're seeing how close this game ended up being um, there were certainly some big calls here to go for the uh, the corners over the post there uh, but it did lead to a line out and the first try of the game coming from Ken Owens a fellow Welshman uh, <laughs> we get to see it here the Lions uh, having a nice setup on the mall there and it uh, did look pretty solid in all honesty uh, they did get an advantage for Edsbeth collapsing them all didn't matter. Ken Owens getting over that uh, that try line and uh, Finn Russell with a conversion. And this is what we wanted to see. I definitely think Luke Cowan-Dickey was having so much more impacts on these games than Ken Owens. And being able to have Ken Owens get an early try in there to bring Luke Cowan-Dickey on and maybe do the same thing later on in the game, I think was a really nice setup for the Lions in this one. Um, so nice to see a five metre more work for the Lions in all honesty. They uh, they really haven't had it working for them so far in this tour. The Lions managing to collect the kickoff. Uh, went for a little box kick and Mostert got another penalty against him for crossing in front of Duan van der Merve. Again, silly penalties coming in from South Africa in this first half. Um, no real need. Um, South Africa managed to defend the following attack, which is really nice for them. Lions uh, switching to slowing down the play for some reason. Now, there was a couple of instances in this game where using the backs in this Lions team was just carving through the South African defence. As soon as that ball went wide, there was room to be found, and they were certainly utilising people like Josh Adams, Liam Williams. If they could get it out wide, it was certainly there for the taking, but there were so many attacks that the Lions did in this game. Well, they just seem to take it up the middle. This one in particular was a mall they created. We sort of saw it a bit more uh, when I think back to, I think New Zealand has done it before, and I've seen England do it before. Setting up the mall in the middle of the field on your own possession, purposefully to try and basically drive forward and try and get a penalty. Um, but no real need. South Africans are so good at defending the malls. It didn't really lead to anything, um, which is a bit of shame for them. Um, they did manage uh, to kick it out, and South Africa, again, 
closing the gap at the line out, uh, which was a weird penalty they kept giving away, especially when the ref penalises you once. You should just be looking to not do it again. Uh, the Lions did get a free kick and managed to clear their own half pretty easily and uh, very easily on there. Towards the 30th minute, we got to see a potential try scoring opportunity. Uh, South Africans again giving away a penalty for not rolling away on the ground. They kicked to the corner. Um, it was a superb kick, actually, made some really good meters. They had, did have the mall. The mall got. Um, got shut down and the penalty went against Curry for moving in front of the mall um, which was a real shame that driving mall was working so well that could have been another try there was no reason for Tom Curry to break away from that uh, that sort of mall that was going on there took out the fellow man and uh, gave them an easy opportunity out there was an opportunity there for a try absolutely missed and as well as that about 20 seconds earlier Liam Williams and we all know what I'm talking about here if you watch this game Liam Williams on the superb breakaway leading to a two on one attacking run against a hooker on the wing Josh Adams with miles of space and for some reason Liam Williams just didn't make that pass that was a try that went absolutely screaming and it was things like that that's going to have let the Lions down in this game um, I, I really thought that was an easy opportunity so two tries in the space of three minutes or so that the Lions could have got but uh, their own execution not helping them there there was another little nice break later on, uh, losing this offload play, Alan Wynn offloading to Itoje, who managed to find a nice little gap in between two of the uh, the South African defenders, making really good room, but a superb tackle from Colby. I couldn't believe Colby was making a tackle like that, diving at the feet of Itoje, managing to get him down, and Dialende over for the jackal there, managing to win them a penalty, managing to shut down another opportunity. Um, the Lions not really supporting their players enough on breakaways, which was a bit of a shame, but uh, the South African breakdown area was was so good in this game the South Africans have a lot to be proud of in terms of their defense and their breakdown areas um, they did go for another line out and the Lions this time closing the gap at the line out again very weird but it's nice to see the consistency coming in there um, did lead to a scrum and the South Africans managed to win a penalty um, later on in that scrum um, it was a nice boost for the uh, for the South Africans to win those penalties at the, at the scrum time. Hasn't really been happening for the first half. Taking a very slow build-up, as we really got to see in the second game. This was very reflective of the second game overall. Um, but it was nice to see them manage to get that, uh, that penalty in there. Um, I don't know why the Lions were trying so hard to compete at the scrums. Um, it was clear from about the 35th minute onwards that the scrums were not really going to go their way. But on so many occasions, whether it was the South African put in or the Lions put in, they were really trying to hold that ball in the scrum. And I would have just liked to have seen it get ball in, ball out, spread it to the backs while you've got sort of five on five on one side and just let the backs do the work. I don't know why the Lions were so consistent at wanting to just engage the South Africans. are probably what they're best at at World Rugby and is that involved in those set pieces. And uh, Pollard there managing to get another penalty in the 35th minute. And just before the halftime mark here, we had a really interesting set of uh, of things going on here, in all honesty. So let's start off with, there was a penalty in the 37th minute. Tom Curry managing to win a nice little jackal penalty. Um, the Lions managed to kick to the corner rather than going to post. It was a good kick from Finn Russell. There was nothing wrong with that. Uh, but, you know, when you were sort of, what were they? They are about 10-6 up at this point. You just thought they'd take the final three just to take you in at half time, 13-6 up would have been a nice little boost for them. They decided not to. They went for the line out. Um, the line out was stolen by Etzebeth, which was, I think, maybe an arguable one. Um, I, 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 Looking at the replay, it really looked like Etzebeth took the arm of Alan Wynn, which is a bit of a shame uh, because he's very good at that normally. Uh, but he didn't manage to get picked up for that one. Uh, they looked for a knock on rather than looking back at the line out, which I think they might have got away a little bit lucky with that one. And it went to a scrum on the breakdown uh, afterwards. So it was a lion scrum. The South African defence from the scrum was absolutely solid. Um, the Lions, for some reason, again, uh, just going for this pick and go, the first receiver technique straight up the line. Um, we see it a lot in Northern Hemisphere, and it does work in the Northern Hemisphere regions. Uh, eventually, a team will break. Eventually, a room will open up. But South Africa in this game just looks so solid. I have no idea why they weren't using their backs, why they weren't spreading it wide. They just wanted to go man on man and try and smash their way through. Um, uh, but eventually... Um, they did manage to uh, manage to get a little turnover there, South Africa, with the penalty. Uh, so they managed to hold out there. They did, for some reason, kick on rather than just kicking it into touch, which I thought was a strange move. They weren't exactly going to go the full uh, sort of 90 metres up the field. Uh, but it didn't really need to lead anything. Um, and the ball did go down in a mall from the following line out and they kicked it out for half time, 10-6. There was one final incident. They were looking at Visa. 
um, attacking the man on the ground uh, or sort of trying to do like a clear out but cleared out with the shoulder and the referee said there was nothing going on there um, and I thought that was quite a big call because uh, looking at the replay I didn't see it on the initial one but looking at the replay it did look like when Jones had gone down in the mall most people just hold on to the ball when it's in a mall anyway um, there was no real clear out attempt for me personally um, Vista sort of led him with the shoulder directly into the back of Wynn Jones um, the, the referee's argument was he went low I mean, low is like two inches off the ground. I mean, he's either going to knock himself out hitting the ground. Um, I think Visa might have got a little bit lucky there. I, I certainly would have said we've seen calls like that be called a penalty in other games that we've seen. Um, but I think they got away a little bit lucky there. But at least the referee was uh, looking a little bit closer at that one. So we went in at halftime 10-6 to the Lions. It looked very reflective how the second game went. Lions up at halftime. And the main story for me in that one was going to be down to execution. Both teams having the opportunity to actually score points and not really taking them. Um, South Africa not executing the set pieces well enough. The line outs not going well for them. The scrums not going how they would want them to. Um... Pollard, you know, will be looking for his uh, his kicking ratio to improve by the end of this game anyway. Uh, but the Lions themselves not looking to finish those tries. The Liam Williams try could have gone out to Josh Adams. It would have been a try. Had Tom Curry not got involved, could have been a try. So on supported a toe South Africa massively on the back foot. Could have looked for another try there. The Lions look very dominant through that first half. 67% territory, 67% uh, possession, sorry, um, and 59% territory. Um, they looked very, very good in open play and just didn't need to be bringing it into the um, the bunched up defensive technique. South Africa defence looked very good when it was just forwards fighting each other and using those two on one tackles. And finally, the South African aerial battles, really, really good for them. The only real counter the Lions had was Liam Williams. Um, and pretty much if South Africa had gone more down the Duan van der Merve channel, I think they would have won an awful lot more aerial battles in that first half. On to the second half. I said this was going to be a long video. Feels like it's going on already. Uh, South Africa managing to win a penalty very early on uh, in their own scrum. Um, 43rd minute in. Nice little boost for them. Wynn Jones went off with an injury. Mako Vunapola came on. Um, again, the Lions penalised for closing the gap of the line out. Bizarre. Don't know why this happened so much. The referee did have a talk with them at this point and said that you need to be sorted in this closing out. Uh, and if anyone does it again, we will be penalising. And it stopped it completely. Um, it'd be nice in, uh, in more general games rather than just these games for uh, referees to be looking at that. South Africa did manage to go on a superb little offensive attack here and trying to make good move. The only thing that I am noticing from this South African attack is they're very route one. It's pretty much just first receiver, crash ball, set up a ruck, pass out first receiver crash ball um, I would like to see them use the backs we got to see it later in the game when the backs did manage to get into open play again the South Africans did it it makes me wonder why for three tests we haven't seen it from either side you know using those backs to the best of their ability uh, would have really been nice to have seen um, there was another penalty opportunity in the 47th minute Tom Curry not rolling away. Tom Curry had a couple of penalties in this game, which was a bit of a shame for him. However, Pollard did miss that kick, and there, that was a bit of a running theme through this. There was another one in the 53rd minute. Uh, there was a high tackle on Colby from Finn Russell, which people were looking at for potentially a yellow card. I think a penalty was the right call there. Colby's about five foot two anyway. <laughs> and he, uh, he was quite low to the ground, knee low to the ground. Finn Russell bending at the hips. I think that was a fair call for a penalty only. I don't think there was a great deal of force. Um, I think there was a, probably a slight difference to what we saw if anyone watched the Australia-France game where Corio Betty went off with a red card with a very similar tackle, you know, that sort of forearm shoulder to the head. Um, but for me, I think a penalty was probably fine there. However, Pollard did miss that kick again, um, which was a shame. Um, there was then in the 56th minute, the South African try. Now, this will probably be a big talking point um, for a lot of people online. So the Colby try... Uh, Duan van der Merve, again, losing another aerial battle. Uh, he, again, I, I, I was surprised to see Duan van der Merve in this team compared to Josh Adams on that left wing. I think he would have done much better in some of these high ball scenarios. Um, the ball went up in the air. LaRue managing to get the ball on the breakaway. Tackle, uh, the pass to Colby, sorry. It was a great sidestep, avoiding the tackle of Liam Williams. He probably should have done a bit better, but we know how good Colby is. Um, a brilliant little run just to take him on, managing to beat Cameron Dickey as well and getting himself a try. Um, personally, for me, I absolutely think that's a try. Um, I did have a look quite closely at it, and it looks like, to me, the ball um, from the contact went vertically upwards. 
Uh, and then Maro Atoje came in and knocked the ball on. It was an advantage to South Africa. And the ball played out. There was no forward passes or anything. Um, I think it was a pretty clear run. And for me, I think I would just... I think that's a perfectly fine try there. No real issues with that one. Pollard did get the uh, the conversion for that one as well. Uh, people arguing that the ball went forwards. I, I don't think so. I'm reminded... Uh, I think it was Wales versus England. There was a very similar instance with the ball getting popped up and it going vertically. And that's where camera angles become very big on depending on where the camera angle is, whether the ball looks uh, like it went forward or not. I think that was a perfectly fine try and uh, a real big boost for the South Africa team there. On to the final 20, and I've still got two pages left to go on here. Uh, we set up the new uh, the new front rows coming in, Bar near Kane. Uh, the Lions managing to win a penalty at the South African scrum. Uh, kicks off going down there, so I think near Kane needs to come on. He did come on as soon as that penalty happened. Uh, that was probably the only real break we saw in that South African scrum throughout most of the game, in all honesty. Uh, there was another Lions penalty in the 67th, uh, second, 62nd minute. Uh, Visa uh, tackling after the pass was made. Again, silly mistakes. I feel like South Africa could have won this game by even more had they not had silly penalties like this. Finn Russell managing to score that penalty there. Um, then we had a little, few little compound errors coming in here. Um, there was that penalty, and then immediately afterward, we had Etzebeth at the breakdown again, um, allowing the Lions a nice, easy um, sort of exit from uh, from their area. The no need again, penalty at the breakdowns, just going beyond the ball. Very silly. Um, South Africa did have one back on their own, in all honesty, though. Tom Curry in the 65th minute, holding on to the ball, uh, and they managed to uh, to kick to touch, and the Lions collapsed their own mall there. Uh, collapsed the South African mall, sorry. And that led to another South Africa penalty, where we got to see... Smorne Stain going on for South Africa and scoring his penalty. Uh, it was nice to see him back on the field. I feel like I haven't seen that name for an awful long time in this uh, Springboks jersey. So nice to see him back on the field. And he had a really good game, to be fair, since he came on the final 15 for him, looking very good. In the 69th minute, uh, Etzebeth not rolling away. Another penalty. A lot of penalties going against Etzebeth for this game. Um, you know, he's, a, he's an on-the-line player, but uh, I think he would have liked to add a few less penalties in this game anyway. Um, Lions penalties. They decided to go for the, the touch rather than the three points. And now, you know, with hindsight, we get to see the score. It would it have been useful to go, have gone for the uh, the points there? Um, the ball didn't work. The ball does go down. They had the all English front row: Cameron Dickey, Vunapola, Carl Sinclair, smashing and going. The pick and go: Mako Vunapola getting over the try line, but held up so well. We've seen it in every game now. I think in these South Africa games, how much they would love to hold that ball up once it gets over. Um, they did go then back. And South Africa winning a penalty at the scrum against the head again. Kyle Sinclair there sliding down, knee on the ground, ball going there. A huge turnover point. Those points going amiss, not getting the try, not taking the three points. How much was that going to impact the final scoreline? The Lions didn't make the same mistake in the 74th minute. Uh, Am got a penalty for going in at the side of the ruck, which I actually thought was a little harsh. Um, there was a couple of instances in this game where the ball got called out of the ruck because players were going beyond the ball and shoulders were leaving rucks and stuff. Um, and I actually think this was another one of them. Um, I feel like the South African lad dragged over the... Um, the the Lions defender, and the ball actually came out. And I think Am was perfectly within his rights to go for the ball. The ref uh, pinging him for that one, though. Henshaw with a nice little breakaway, but the uh, the support just managing to help him out enough there. And the, the referee uh, managing to penalise Am. I think Conor Murray made a bit of a meal out of it, but uh, got the job done. And Finn Russell then managing to draw this game at 16 all with only five minutes remaining. I mean, what a tense little final five minutes this was. Uh, we had some great little running play going through to the 78th minute where there was a South Africa penalty. Courtney Laws not rolling away. Again, this is where talent and just sort of experience on the pitch comes in. I actually think Courtney Laws was trying to roll away, but there was some brilliant work at the breakdown from South Africa, managing to just hold his legs in enough. Have your, have your uh, scrum half, wave his arms around enough. Oh, I can't get to the ball does the job, convinces the referee that's what you need to see from uh, from those people. And he managed to get the penalty only for Herschel Yantes to take the quick tap. I mean, what, I, mean I, I am not a, a South African supporter, but I know we have a new bunch of subscribers who are all South African supporters. I bet you guys were screaming at the television as that happened. Why on earth would you take the quick tap? I know there was the argument for he could take the quick tap and if someone took him, you'd gain the extra 10 metres, make the kick easy. Easier. But I oh just don't do that. Uh, I was uh, I thought the Lions had got away so lucky with that one. However, the referee did call them back. 
said he wasn't on the mark where he took the kick. Again, I thought that was a big call. Um, I thought he was very close to where the mark was to the point that it almost made no difference. But uh, getting away there and Mornay staying with another successful penalty conversion, getting it over the South Africans 19-16 up. The Lions did manage to get their own kickoff back. This was sort of what we, like, we saw in the first test where South Africa managed to get it back. Um, the Lions managed to uh, win a scrum. Uh, thought it could have been a penalty as Khaleesi was the second man in. Now, that's what I had written down. I remember now what I meant by that. There was a breakdown going on and the tackle was made and a player went for the ball. So the tackle was made, player releases and went onto the ball. I can't think who that initial player was. That player got cleared out. Um, Conor Murray stood over the ball. Again, Conor Murray, rather than just passing the ball, decides to stand at the back of the uh, of the ruck. And then Sia Khaleesi came in and reached over and put his hands on the ball and tried to lift it again. Now, I, I have to get caught up a little bit more on what the rules are on this because I'm pretty sure that is very much classed as the second man in. And, uh, and you're not allowed to put your hands on if you're the second man in. The referee didn't call the ball was out. Uh, but Sia Khaleesi went hands on the ball as the second man attempting to lift the ball. I'm not sure why that wasn't a penalty. Um, I couldn't quite hear why the ref gave it over the mic as what it was. And uh, then a scrum was given. Um, I, I'm, again, I'm not 100% sure why. It was a free kick given for uh, like a player interfering in the ruck or something. I'm not quite sure what happened there. And I couldn't hear it over the ref's mic, which was a bit of a shame. It did lead to a Lions scrum. So the Lions still with that grasping bit of hope only for Vunapola to collapse it on the far side and South Africa managing to get their penalty and kicking it clear for a South Africa win. 19-16 to South Africa. What a tight affair. Um, this was the game we wanted. We wanted that tight-knit affair. Um, and it really boiled down to those final few minutes. And it was just a, a battle of attrition at the end. So as I put on the board there, congratulations to South Africa on winning this Lions tour. Um, in all honesty, I think the Lions uh, probably got got beaten here i think they won the first half and i think south africa won that second half there was a stat in like the 65th minute that oh sorry the 55th minute that the lions hadn't even got into the south africa 22 in the first 15 minutes of that second half the south african just looking to dominate the game there um it was looking really really good again as it is i think maybe it's more of a uk thing all of you guys are dropping in um in the comments in the last week's video about man of the match uh, you all seem to know it was Mapimpi immediately as soon as the video was up. Um, I have no recognition of who the man of the match is. They don't announce it in the broadcast on Sky. I can't hear it anyway. They don't talk about it after the game. I watched the trophy ceremony. They still didn't mention who was man of the match. Um, so we've got no man of the match there. Um, but I think it was such a close game. I'd like to mention, uh, I think, from both teams. For me, from the Lions, Finn Russell, absolutely man of the match for the Lions, um, came on very early in the game and completely changed the complexion of the game. I think if Dan Bigger was on that field, I think the Lions would have lost by more. Um, I, I, I think they were looking to control the game rather than attack the game. And uh, I think the South Africans were looking too good to control again. So I think Finn Russell, for me, man of the match for the Lions. And then for South Africa, a very hard call in all honesty. I think as a team, they played very well. Um, maybe you could give it to Colby managing to get his try certainly secured them a good chunk of points he had a couple of nice little runs the defensive tactic he had against Itoje I thought was very good uh, Etzebeth was doing very well in the lineouts, but a lot of penalties against him um, so maybe not uh, giving that one to Etzebeth maybe I'd be more inclined to go for Colby um, I also thought uh, Am had quite a good game in centre in terms of uh, smashing it up the line uh, but yeah I think there was quite a few South African names you could mention there but not a real standout um, now that I think about it, Pollard had quite a few missed kicks. Mornay Stain did well as soon as he came on from uh, from the field. In fact, maybe I'd even give it to Kobus Reinach. I thought he had a really good game. Um, and I really don't think they missed uh, Fafta Klerk on that pitch at all. The speed of the breakdown was really good. The ball getting out, the choices being made, um, I think was really, really good. So a couple of fantastic players from South Africa. But there we have it, guys. Sorry, this one's been such a long one. I don't even know how long it is. You guys will obviously know by the time this video is up. But what a fantastic tournament. Congratulations to South Africa. A 2-1 win against the Lions. They have played awesome in this tournament. It's been so nice to watch real high line rugby. Um, thank you to everyone who subscribed to the channel recently. It's boosted us over a thousand subscribers. It's been a huge boost to the channel. It's the first time I've ever been able to do anything about Lions 
on uh, on the actual channel before. It's the first time I've ever done videos like this. Set up, talking to you guys, doing review videos. It's all brand new, so I'm glad so many people have enjoyed it and enjoyed the sort of the review style I have on the games. So thank you so much. But make sure you drop down in the comments what you thought of the game, what you want to mention, who you thought was uh, played really well, what you thought was good, what you thought was bad. Make sure you drop it down in the comments. And if you have enjoyed this video, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all the rugby news because we don't just do the Lions Tour. There's going to be a bunch going on for uh, maybe they do the Autumn Internationals when we get round to the Six Nations again. So make sure you subscribe to the channel just to keep up to date with all the latest videos as they do come out. I hope you've all enjoyed today, guys. Not just today, but also through the tour. I have set up a playlist of every video I've done across the whole South African tour, so make sure you want to go and check some of those videos out and watch the whole playlist all over again. I hope you've all enjoyed today, guys. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.